Hey you witches, how you doing today? Um, I thought it would be fun to start off the new year with a flip through of my grimoire and sort of where it's at to date. It's definitely a work in progress, it's not complete by any means, but I thought I'd show you so far what I've got going on. Um, Basically, I did do an introduction in a previous video, but I filled in a few more pages and I just thought, let's do an update. It keeps me motivated to want to keep working on it. So before we get into it, for those of you who are new around here, my name is Taya. Welcome to the channel where we talk about all things witchcraft. And for those of you who are returning viewers, maybe coming in from another video, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the support. All of you, please consider subscribing. It's just a really great way to help us build the channel. So, my grimoire. All right. Um, just to give you a lay of it, it is postbound. This is actually just a picture album. And I, I have plans to, like, fancy it up to do something. It's just a piece of paper that sits over the side, over the posts. Um, I'd like to do something a little more official with the, with the binding of it. Because it's not, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of got, like holes in it like intentional holes in it it's just not very stable so i'd like to do create something new here that i can actually put um piece bookmarks to i think this is a little too flimsy it's really just paper and then i can put bookmarks and have bookmarks in my book etc and i'd like to just you know witchify the cover a little bit we'll open it up on the inside this is just the front page here you can see the binding screws um, basically you can see the original screw holes were not a typical eight and a half by 11 hole punched side. They actually sat in a little bit. So I had my husband drill me new holes and then I bought the extended, the, ex the, uh, screw back extensions. All that was purchased at Michael, including the covers. Um, and I, I created a new, um, the cover page on the inside. It was just plain black. So I went and, you know, bought some fancy cover papers and glued those in and created this lovely introduction to my grimoire. So here's where we get started. And the first thing I have in here is of course my land acknowledgement, which to me, I think as a traditional crafter, that is so essential to acknowledge that um, a big part of what I do is built upon the land upon which I live and to acknowledge that the land upon which I live is ultimately stolen and it did not belong to me in the first place even though I live here now. So I have my acknowledgement um, written out in English and in Cree at the bottom and a map of the territory that I live in which is Treaty 6 in Canada, Alberta. And then a bit about my ancestry. So this is sort of, you know, the land upon which I live. This is a little bit more about where I'm actually descended from. So I have my ancestry and eventually would like to put in, um, I have a, a family tree that I've done going back like, oh my gosh, so many generations. So I'm actually gonna make a fold out and put that family tree in here. Here's a little bit more of the land upon which I live where uh, this is the dog park where I walk my dog and I do a ton of foraging. And then this is my actual neighborhood. I need to go through and actually fill in um, a few more details, you know, put down where I live. I actually live right here on this little section down here at the bottom. But this is where I walk my dog. This is my neighborhood. There's three lakes here. There's tons of like green space, um, walkways and parkland and all kinds of cool stuff out here in the suburbs. So I have a map of where I actually live. Then we get into uh, laying the ring is a sort of a quick uh, circle casting, if you will, projecting a sacred sphere. So again, it, it's more about doing it in three dimensions. And then an actual laying the compass ritual that I follow quite regularly. And then the hoozle, which is like a sacrificial meal that I do as part of ritual when I do the full compass. So there's the ritual, and then there's the two um, songs or chants that go with it. Then we get into um, alphabets. So these here are not so much divination, it's the actual alphabets that you can sort of substitute in to create magical writings or inscriptions or whatever. So I've got Theban, the witch's alphabet. I've got runes. And then I've got the Ohem with an illustration of um, the Book of Ballymote, which is a very well-known Ohem transcript. Um, so again, this isn't divination, but actually like using it in the context of creating script. 
I haven't got to divination yet in my book. Um, we have some on home warding and how that would be done. Creating a guardian ward for my home and then a home warding crystal grid. And then this is the newest, newest edition. So all of this, as you can see, has been handwritten. This is actually done up on the computer. It's way more information than I am able to handwrite out. So I thought I'll, I'll, you know, create a document and print it. And it is um, astrology and astrological correspondences. So at the front, we just have a kind of a wheel of all of the different um, sun signs and when those occur. And then we get started right away with Aquarius. So I started it by the calendar year, not the astrological um, the Zodiac, which starts with Aries in the spring, we're actually going to start with Aquarius at the beginning, January 20th to February 18th. So there's the cover page and then a write up about the Aquarius season and what that means. Then there's a write up about the new moon in Aquarius and then a new moon in Aquarius journaling questions, um, a focus for Aquarius in the sixth house and a moon scope. For myself, having a Leo moon during Aquarius. And all of this information is taken from the Spirit Daughter Workbooks by Jill Winterstein. So if you're interested in that kind of information, there's tons more in the books. But this was the information I found I was working with regularly. And then also then during this Aquarius season, we have a Leo moon with the Aquarius sun. So there's a write-up about the Leo moon occurring in the Aquarius sun and how those two play off each other when we work with them. There's a house scope for Leo in the 12th house because I have Leo in my 12th house. Um, a full moon card reading. So one, two, three questions if you wanted to do like a three card draw. And then 10 journaling questions to do during the Leo full moon that occurs during Aquarius. So that's that first section. And then each section sort of follows the same. So we have Pisces, a write-up on the Pisces sun season, the new moon in Pisces, and then new moon in Pisces, journaling, focus, and a moon scope. And then in Pisces, sun, we have the Virgo moon, because it's always opposite. So there's a write-up of the moon and um, in Pisces and the or, sorry, the moon in Virgo and the sun in Pisces and how they work together, a house scope, the three-card draw and 10 journaling questions. And it goes through this for all of the sun signs. So again, this was pulled from the Spirit Daughter Workbooks by Jill Winterstein. And I guess you can probably see, right? It's just more information than I would have been comfortably able to hand write out. So I thought I would go ahead and just print it on the computer. Let me know what you think is like, I don't know, does it take away from the book that it's not handwritten? Um, I, I hope not. Um, This is stuff that I work with on a very regular basis. So that's why I wanted the information in my grimoire. I wanted this to become a book that I just go to when it's time for, right, when it's time to do that next, oh, it's, you know, Aquarius season, boom, pull out my book. Instead of pulling out 1700 different journals and stuff, I'm trying to compile all of that working information into one book here. Um, you'll see here the new moon in Gemini, I'm actually missing um, because when I, have the Spirit Daughter Workbook. Um, it was from 2021, and that year it was an eclipse year. So really the information in her book was about the eclipse, the new moon in Gemini eclipse, which isn't a standard. So I would maybe need to go ahead and repurchase the book in 2022 so I could get a little bit of additional information. But yeah, it was kind of a fun um, endeavor, uh, basically just copy and pasting all the information out of the PDF files that I was sent and compiling them into my actual grimoire. So everything that goes in here is stuff that I work with on a regular basis. That is an active part of my practice. Again, a section that I'm missing. But I tried to make it look you know, to fit in with the aesthetic of the book with the woodcuts and the woodcut symbols. And Sagittarius. And that's, oh, and Capricorn is at the end there. That's where we end off is in Capricorn. And then this is all just blank paper at the end that has not yet been filled in. So as you can maybe see here, it's not a lot. I've got maybe half the pages filled out. Um, but if you look at it, this half is only a small portion of the actual spine. So I've got lots more information to add in here. 
and to sort of have some fun with. And in the back, it just has the same inside cover plate as it had on the others. And it also just opens up in the back with those screws as well, right? The post bound screws. All of which you can find at Michael's to create your own book. So that's just kind of a quick flip through of my actual grimoire um, and where it's at so far, what I work with. Um, yeah, questions, comments, leave them down below. Um, I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to know how you do your grimoire. Do you have a bound book or do you do something more like this with the post bound so you can switch pages in and out? Um, I'd love to know. Leave me a comment and otherwise we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks so much, you guys.